Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Konrad Gorlinski. Today, speaking at the National Council of the Modern Party, the new head of the civic platform, Donald Tusk, for the first time stated clearly that he intends to build a large coalition among the current opposition parties ahead of the next parliamentary elections in 2023. His most desired coalition partner is Szymon Hołownia, a TV personality who rose to fame after coming in third during the 2020 presidential election. At a meeting of the National Council of the Modern Party, Donald Tusk, apart from his standard criticism of the law and justice government and his discussions about education, also made it clear that his party's goal is to build a coalition with a joint electoral list based on an alliance with Shimon Hovnia's grouping. The first sign of this aspiration was a recent joking proposal made by the former civic platform leader Boris Butka to Hovnia, in which he underlined that Hovnia should become vice president of the civic platform. Only by uniting, and I don't speak about the civic coalition that we have built, but rather about a much wider political camp with regular people, NGOs and civil society, will we be able to defeat this type of organized villainy. Simon Hołownia himself spoke on the subject of possible cooperation with the platform. I don't know how things will go regarding government coalitions. It's up to the polls to decide what the political scene will look like. At this time, I don't plan to unite with anyone, civic platform or anyone else. We differ from civic platform on many issues. A recent opinion poll shows that if parliamentary elections were held this Sunday, the ruling Law and Justice Party would win it with 30.2% of the vote. The Civic Platform Party would come in in second place, supported by 24.1% of respondents. Szymon Hołownia's Poland 2050 Party would get 17.4%, the Left Party 7.5%, and the Confederation would also cross the threshold to enter Parliament, winning 5.9% of the vote. Poland's President Andrzej Duda was one of the few world leaders invited to meet with Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga in connection with the inauguration ceremony of the Tokyo Olympics. The President's Chancellery announced that the meeting between the two leaders dealt with bilateral political and economic relations, as well as Japanese involvement in the Three Seas Initiative. Polish President Andrzej Duda met with the Japanese Prime Minister a day after attending the opening ceremony for the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. The Games, postponed by a year due to the coronavirus, are being held without spectators in a city under a COVID-induced state of emergency. Only 15 global leaders, including President Duda, U.S. First Lady Jill Biden, and French President Emmanuel Macron attended the opening, along with the Japanese Emperor Naruhito, who opened the Games as his grandfather Hirohito did in 1964. New South Wales, Australia's most populous state, on Saturday reported 163 locally acquired cases of COVID-19, its biggest daily rise up from 136 a day earlier. It's said that this is a worsening outbreak that has led to an urgent push to speed up vaccinations. The state also appears poised to extend a lockdown that was due to end on July 30th. Meanwhile, protests against the strict lockdown regime are starting to spread in the region. Thousands of Australians participated in anti-lockdown protests in Sydney on Saturday, defying public health orders amidst a growing COVID-19 outbreak. Around 5,000 protesters marched through Australia's most populous city, Sydney, waving Australian flags and chanting, We want freedom. The protests turned violent fairly quickly as protesters threw potted plants, paint and water bottles at police officers and media, whilst others physically assaulted police horses. To anyone who feels like what's happening with the COVID restrictions is just completely removed from reality and removed from being in touch with what's on the ground. Please know you're not alone. There's a lot of people who agree with you. We're here just to speak and to let our voices be heard and nothing else. At least 57 people were arrested at Sydney's protest, with many more expected. Whilst in neighbouring state Victoria, local media reported at least half a dozen arrested in Melbourne. In response to calls for an even larger protest next week, the head of the New South Wales Police warned that he will bring in reinforcements for the next protest and expects a lot of people to receive infringement notices. 
I'm hoping that we issue 3,500 infringement notices. I'm hoping that we have people before the court, and I really hope we can get some charges and convictions out of today's work by the New South Wales Police. It's essential for people to get the message, and those that are calling for it to occur again next week, look out, because these 400 officers will turn into 4,000 if needs be. No arrests were made at the protest in Brisbane, Queensland, where public health orders are more relaxed. However, the local police have stated that it will be reviewing footage and charges charges may be made in the coming days. Cleveland's Major League Baseball team has announced that it will change its name from the Indians to the Guardians this season. The push to eliminate allegedly racially insensitive material from public life has been intensifying, especially following the May 2020 death of George Floyd. The team, known as the Indians since 1915, began considering a possible name change in mid-2020 and selected Guardians from a list of 1,198 options that were narrowed down through 14 rounds of vetting. Last July, the Cleveland team decided to consider a name change, claiming that social unrest in the United States during the Black Lives Matter summer underscored the need to improve on issues of social justice. In a sign of deep ideological divides in America, former U.S. President Trump wrote a statement in which he called the decision a disgrace. A small group of people with absolutely crazy ideas and policies is forcing these changes to destroy our culture and heritage. At some point, the people will not take it anymore, said Trump, who still has strong support in the party and is considering another run for the presidency in 2024. The administration of President Joe Biden spoke in favor of the move, while also mocking the former president for having been censored by social media giants in a coordinated campaign. Uh, this morning, the uh, Cleveland Indians announced they're changing their name to Guardians, and that's already become an issue in the Ohio Senate race, and uh, the former president just minutes ago uh, uh, attacked it. Any reaction by the president or the White House? We certainly support their change of name. We may be on the other side of the president, former president, on that front, I would guess. I haven't seen his tweet, or however he's communicating these days. Go ahead. In 2018, Cleveland phased out its Chief Wahoo logo, a cartoon figure with red skin, a toothy smile, and a feather in his headband, after it was criticized as a racist caricature. The team known as the Indians won only two World Series championships, most recently in 1948. And thanks for tuning in this evening. I hope you have a wonderful Saturday night.